Right now, I'm going to show you how to get incredible photo editing results using sky replacement in Luminar AI. Hi everyone, Ben here from Ben's Guide. Today, I'm going to guide you through this video tutorial, showing you how to replace skies in your images, giving you incredible results. In the video, you're going to learn how to replace skies in one simple click how to create beautiful reflections that match your sky replacements, how to match the color in your photos with the sky and natural results, and finally, how to achieve the best look for every photo. You may have been frustrated in the past with photo editing, wondering how some people on sites like Instagram achieve such incredible results with their photos, but not today. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get incredible photo editing results when you use the right photo editing software and the right tools. Okay guys, let's jump in to the Sky AI tool and really get to grips with it. On the right hand side, we've got tools. Under tools, if you come down, scrolling down, you will get to the creative tab and then directly below Sky AI. Clicking on this, the first option is for this photo. This is where the AI technology in Luminar AI actually picks the best skies for the picture. Now, of course, this is completely dependent upon your choice. But sometimes if you want to just quickly go for it, you can click on one of these options and you'll see how quickly it replaces the sky in your photo. It's done a really good job here and I actually think that it's made a good choice. But I more enjoy choosing my own sky and having control over the edit. If you want to choose your own sky, you can come into this box here, click on it, and then it will open up a bunch of completely free skies that you can use. If you want to go ahead and get more skies, you can click here and choose from the store. But there is a really good selection to choose from, so let's go ahead and pick a sky. In the scene, I can see that it's orange and you've got this beautiful glow to these rocks. It suggests that it's the end of the day or maybe even the start of the day. And I think an orange sky would actually match this really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a sky. So this one right here, let's go with that. And let's see how this matches up. I think that looks actually really beautiful. These clouds here match so beautifully with this whole scene. And I think that's gonna work really well. If I click off this, now we've got our sky selection. Let's go down to the next tool in the list. This is sky orientation. You can choose vertically if you want to adjust your sky by pushing up on the slider and it's gonna push your sky up. Or if you push down, it's gonna push it down. Now this is the same horizontally. You can move it horizontally across if you want to, or you can go the other way. Now you have a couple of ways of looking at this and changing it if you want to, you can go onto horizon position. And this is where you can change also the horizon position to match what you want it to look like. So I can just grab on this bottom line here and then I can drag it down and this is gonna make the sky come further down or I can drag it up if I want to and that's gonna make the sky come further up. And you can really move this around to make it look exactly how you want it to. You can even change the rotation if you want to, if that's what you want to get. Okay, when you've chose where you want the sky to be, let's say here, I'm going to click on horizon position and that's going to get saved and dialed in. Next up, we're going to take a look at mask refinement. This is a great tool where you can refine the mask or the sky selection in your photo. This is going to be very useful for times where, let's say, on your horizon, it doesn't actually fit very well with what's going on. So let's say they didn't have a separation between the sky and this mountain here. You could use these sliders to adjust this until you get it right. Now, I find the best way to use these sliders is to just move them around until you find a good blend between the three and you get a good match in your image. But for the sake of this image here, it actually looks pretty good as it is. So we're gonna leave it and not mess around with it. But you do have that refinement option right there if you need it. Moving on from the mask refinement, you have scene relighting. Probably my favorite tool inside this actual Sky AI tool. And that's because you can relight the rest of your scene here to match your sky. 
So if I push up Relight Strength, you can see that actually what's happening in the image is this is now relighting my scene to match the sky. If I want to push up Relight Saturation, it's going to do the same, but with the saturation color. I usually find that this doesn't do too much and it's a very subtle change. It can make a bit of a difference in certain situations. Now, if I bring Relight Strength down a little bit, because I think it's actually made it a bit too dark, I think I'm going to add it about there and that looks really nice. If you've got humans in your scene, you can push this up and you can relight the humans too. So you've got all bases covered in the scene relighting. Next up, a really cool thing that's added to Sky AI is reflection. This is where you can reflect the sky inside the water here, and this makes it look so much more realistic and natural. So if I push this slider up, you can see that I'm adding more of a reflection in here. If I bring it down, I'm taking the reflection out of the image. But of course, adding the reflection in is going to make it look realistic, and that's why I'm going to push it right up. If you're someone that likes long exposure effects and that nice blurry water effect, then you can also push up water blur and give it that lovely smooth look, which actually looks really, really nice. So I'm going to leave it about there because I think that's done a really good job. Clicking off reflection, we can finally go into sky adjustments. This is where you can make more adjustments to the sky. You can add things like an atmospheric haze, which makes it look a bit more hazy and sometimes matches really bright scenes. So if I push that up, you can see how it's adding this haze into the image. But for the sake of this photo, I actually prefer it with just a tiny amount of haze. Now, if you think that your image is a little bit too cold, you also have options to warm the sky up and the image and just give it that more of a golden glow look like that. Finally, you can change the brightness of the scene, which can make a big difference if it's a bit dark, but you can see that you have all the tools that you need to really transform the look of your photo here. Now, one thing I really wanna show you, which is important, is how good this is at making selections. Let's take a look at the next photo. We've got this tree here, which is really, really difficult if you were going to be making a selection in something like Photoshop. It would take you a long time to get the selection correct, but you'll be able to see just how good the Sky AI is at choosing the sky area and not choosing the other area in the photo. Take a look at this. Let's just go ahead actually and just choose on one of these guys. And let's go with that one. And you'll see that it's going to choose all of the areas between the leaves here, and it's going to make a really amazing selection. If we just zoom in, you can see this better. Look, you can actually see how good a job it's done. It's got between all the branches and between all the leaves here, and it looks, well, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It really impresses me how good they are at choosing between the sky and the rest of the image. Now, this is a really good time to show you mask refinement and what it's useful for. If I bring all of these options down here, you can quickly see that the selection is not as good. You can see that you've got this area around the side of the leaves, which doesn't look very realistic now and it just doesn't match it. It's all white and it just doesn't look correct with the blue sky. So you can see how using mask refinement and blending these three sliders together can actually give you some really good results in refining the mask. And just by doing that, we can already see that we've nearly got now a perfect selection around the leaves and the branches. I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial today on the Luminar AI Sky Replacement Tool. This is a tool I highly recommend you to get to grips with. It's really easy to use, as you've been able to see from the video today, and it can really have a massive transformation on your photos. If you've enjoyed the video, guys, it would mean a lot to me if you click that like button. And if you like editing videos, if you like photography or video, hit subscribe. We'd love to have you here at Ben's Guide. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.